Hello fellow Volt owners, or Voltaires, I'm not sure what we call ourselves. I have a 2012 Chevy Volt, it's uh, 2016, I bought it about a year ago. It's about four years old, and the other day the 120 volt charger that comes with the car uh, just stopped working. Uh, when I plug it in, the LED lights at the, the face of it don't come on, I didn't know what was wrong with it. I went to the forums to see if anyone had this experience, YouTube, I wasn't really able to find much insight. So uh, rather than just buying, I know it's out of warranty, so rather than buying uh, like a $400 replacement, I figured, uh, what do I have to lose? So I'll crack the thing open and see what's going on. So to do that, you take a screwdriver and you place it right into this joint at the faceplate here and you just start popping it all the way around. It's just a little heat welded plastic joint. When you get your screwdriver in there, it'll crack all the way around. Then you open up the faceplate and you see the power cord comes in through the back and you bring it around and you see the hot, the neutral, and the ground coming through there. The hot's here. The neutral had a fuse, an inline fuse that was uh, coated in rubber and I figured it out that the fuse was bad. So I took a jumper, just a 12 gauge wire, and I jumped it. And then when I plug it in, you see that it works again. So I figured out that it was the fuse that was bad and to make this thing work again, I will have to replace the fuse. Uh, obviously because I can't leave the I can't leave the jumper like that without it uh, fuse protected. So I looked at the fuse to try to figure out what size to replace it with and it didn't I couldn't figure it out because it was really coated in rubber didn't say what size it was. So I'll show you how to figure out what size uh, fuse you need. So just take a digital clamp uh, clamp on multimeter and turn it to measure current. And you're just going to want to take that and clip it on the hot line coming through. And you see you get about 12 amps or so. Make that easier for you. So to figure out what size fuse you need, usually you just take 135% of that number. So if you multiply that by 1.35, you're going to get like 16 or something. And you just go the next uh, size up from there. And they come in increments of 5. So you just use a 20 amp fuse will be fine. And that's kind of in line with what I read online. So I'm going to take that off, turn that off. I'm going to start to replace the fuse. Um, the charger's plugged into the car. I'll just unplug it from here just because it's easier. And then I'll remove this little ribbon right here. Just to give myself some space to work in there. Do that right with your hand. And the car's not going to like that I unplugged it from here. It'll start beeping in a couple seconds. So I'm going to take off the jumper. So now I have my neutral that I have to connect with an inline fuse. And what I did, I went on Amazon and I bought uh, just a waterproof 20 amp inline fuse holder. And you just kind of cut that off, you break it in half. And it comes with a glass fuse. I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use a nicer uh, ceramic fuse. I'm gonna pop that in there. Pop that in there, okay. And I just basically have to connect this here. So the way you do that is you take a wire stripper. Oh, there's the car. Cut that off. All right. And you want to take about a quarter inch off of this. So then you're going to take, I ordered these, uh, I had these um, just butt splice connectors. And you can get these at Amazon. You can get ones that um, you actually seal into place with a heat gun. I, I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to tape it. This is easy enough. These are, these are only a couple bucks too. So what you do is you just take the butt splice connector. You stick it in on there. And you're supposed to use like a crimping tool. I'm not... You don't have to buy a crimping tool. You can just use a, some needle nose and clamp this clamp this down in there if you get enough enough behind it. All right, so that's connected right there. I'm gonna take the other one, put that guy right there. 
take this and clamp this down. There you go. And that's on there pretty good. All right. So what I'm going to do now is, yeah, when I pulled that off, that wire is a little, a little worse for the wear. So I'm going to cut this back just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take the other end of the butt splice connector, stick it right on there. And again, I'll take my needle nose pliers. If you have a crimping tool, great. I'm just going to clamp it on right there. You cut. <laughs> we'll fix that in post production. We'll just, we'll just cut it. We'll cut it. I'll put a new one on there. Sorry. We'll cut it back to where I'm going back onto the neutral line. So I'll clamp this baby down. How about a word from our sponsor? Sponsor is. Chevy Volt. <laughs> Chevy Volt. Don't mess with our equipment. We're getting over on you. <laughs> Chevy Volt. This stuff's extremely expensive for some reason. <laughs> so, okay, so three, two, one, scene. So I'm gonna put my butt splice connector right onto the neutral line. I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers. Crimp that right down on there. And I should have a good, good connection. Okay, I'm going to take the other side. Connect that right there. Straighten that out. Get the pliers. If you have a crimping tool, great. I do not. Okay. It gets kind of tight in here too because of the because where I had to cut the fuse. Put that baby down. Yeah, if you get down on that, it'll be fine. All right, so my inline fuse is now connected. So instead of doing the heat gun thing, I was going to take some tape. And just tape it. It's just black electrical tape. <laughs> you might have this lying around your house if you do any kind of electrical work. Make sure I get around there good. I should have a fuse protected line. So I'm just double check this here. Plug that ribbon ribbon connector back into there. Plug it in. And, and she works. So I'm gonna unplug this now. And the car's not gonna like that. And I'm gonna put this down. Here, put that down here, kind of like how it was before I 
mess with this thing and probably obligated to tell you that it'll avoid your warranty if you do this <laughs> and if you don't know what you're doing don't mess with it so what am i going to do is uh this thing i keep outside so i'm going to take it and i am going to seal this with a bead of silicone so oh i got this uh 100% so any kind of 100% silicone will work this just happens to be red devil that I had so I'm gonna pop that in and I'm going to go all the way around you see where the, the heat weld was so I'm just gonna get like a all right remember the car doesn't like that turn that off now okay I'm gonna be kind of generous with this. Cause I don't want any water getting in there. Take it all the way around. Don't hit the ribbon connector. I did, but that's fine. Uh, I was gonna get a real thick around here. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna use this or anything else, so. <laughs> yeah, let's go glob that baby on there. <laughs> no one's gonna know. <laughs> like you're icing a cake with delicious clear silicone. <laughs> so now. <laughs> Let that set for a second while I have some margarita. Oh, that's good. And I'm going to pop this back on. Let that good silicone ooze out. And I'll just, I'll just cut that off. I'll just run that. I'll just cut that off with a, with a razor blade when it dries. So... Uh, actually, what I do is to keep that nice and tight. So I take some masking tape and tape this up. Cure in place. So this thing looks pretty terrible right now, but I assure you that it works. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's waterproof. Yeah, it should be waterproof now. And when that's dry, I'll cut off the tape. I'll score around that with a razor. And it should look pretty much the same. So, if I plug this baby in, it works, charges my volt. So if your, your charger doesn't work, if you figure out that it's the fuse, uh, the way to do that is it's a, you just uh, check continuity from one side of the fuse to the other if you have a multimeter, or just, just test it by pulling out the fuse and jumping it. Um, that's how you fix it. Thanks very much.